On this episode of TQA Weekly, I talk about the mobile office. My name is Steve Smith, this is TQA Weekly, and if ever you have any questions, comments, suggestions, and or PC horror stories, you can always email me at ask at tqwayweekly.com. Go to my website, tqwayweekly.com, and use the contact form or comment to the specific episode itself. This one being at tqwayweekly.com slash se4ep19. And if you're watching on YouTube, blip.tv, or anywhere else on the internet, you can always use the comments box down below. This episode of TQA Weekly is brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymously and without oversight. For 20% off your new account, go to proxbn.com slash podcasts and use the coupon code TQAWEE. That helps out the show a lot. So today's question is, what kind of office do you use? It sounds like a ridiculous question to ask to many people, and we presume that offices have to be static. We presume that you have a chair and a desk, and that your computer and your phone and everything are connected to the wall. They're static, and you can't do anything about it. You have to do 9 to 5 your day in the same address, at the same place, and you can always be found there. Well, the problem is, that's not going to cut it anymore. And a lot of bosses are going to start seeing a lot of their employees more mobile. They already play with their cell phones and their tablets. It's a natural evolution and we are going to move from the static office to the mobile office. Not that the static office has anything wrong with it, but people like the personal touch and in a world of modernization, the personal touch is disappearing quite fast. So today I'm going to be talking about how you can transition from this static office ideal into the mobile office ideal by explaining how much of our equipment today has either evolved or has been made in such a way that it's accessible remotely. So what does that mean for you? Let's start off with communications. Communication is important in business and it is fundamentally required between the employee and its boss and the clients. So we have the cell phone. So let's not get ahead of, ahead of ourselves. The cell phone is a very limited device. It won't do everything you want, but the cell phone does replace the fixed phone. And there is nothing that's stopping a company, even a small one, from having lines forwarded to their employees' cell phones. It's also possible to equip cell phones with a secondary battery usually built into the case as well as, because we're presuming they're mobile, charging it with the vehicle they are roaming around with from client to client. So the battery life is not necessarily an issue for the mobile phone, it's the getting the phone call to that specific phone, which, let's be frank, it's existed for the last 20 or more years, the ability to forward your calls to another phone. Now, that is what has to do with communication. But how do you get your work done? So we don't necessarily need to use these giant computers like I have here to get most of our work done. There are a few ways of actually getting the horsepower of these machines without necessarily lugging them around. You can use a remote desktop. So you can basically log into your own work computer and actually use that. You can also refrain from logging in and have each of these individual devices have their own horsepower. Because quite frankly, we're pretty sure that most of these people that are going around that have to be mobile don't necessarily require the horsepower, just the tools themselves. We can use laptops, tablets, hybrids, obviously, netbooks, or even smaller. There are devices that are actually specifically tailored to tasks. So if you're a salesperson going around for a soda company, you don't necessarily need anything bigger than a Palm Pilot with a laser barcode scanner on it to make the orders. But if you're a business person that needs to go and get a contract signed, you may have a briefcase with a laptop or a tablet or a hybrid and the papers you need to get signed anyway. And there's nothing stopping you from having a tactile screen and virtually 
getting the signature on the documents as well, eliminating the need for paper altogether, and you could email them a copy of the PDF as well. Now, there are a lot of people that are gonna say, yeah, but the fax, well, quite frankly, it's archaic. It's useless, but there are still businesses using it. My first thought when people say fax is email, because the idea that a fax is more secure than an email is ridiculous. They're both just as insecure, but if you have a business that has to deal with fax, there are plenty of fax to mail services and there is plenty of hardware that can even be server locked or computer locked that allows for faxes to come in digitally. So you can have these faxes drop into your Dropbox if you have them saved there. You can have the server actually receive the faxes and send you a notification that you have a fax in the first place. So having the faxes from your clients is not impossible. You can also go in the other direction. You can email to fax and your clients that require the fax can actually get the message as a fax, whereas you don't necessarily need to have the old school fax machine with all the paper jams and the running out of ink and everything. That is why it died in the first place. And for those who are talking about access to files, well, you do have things like Dropbox and Google Docs and the access through the remote desktop to your computer, but you can also use either a NAS drive or a file server. This obviously depends on the size of your company, but if you use a NAS drive for the small to medium businesses, you can actually log into your own network and have access to all your latest documents all the time. If all the computers connect to the NAS drive for those documents, then that document will be the latest document. The same applies to a file server for bigger businesses. If you can flip the bill, you can have a file server integrated into your business. And the really neat thing about that is most servers offer redundancy on data, which protects the data from ever being lost. Now, besides that, mobility. That is the last thing we have to talk about today. Mobility is important. And we all know that it is possible for our latest gen tablets, notebooks, and laptops, and hybrids, and cell phones, and everything to be completely mobile with their own data plans. But that's not necessarily going to work out in the way that most people believe, and it is cheaper to buy the Wi-Fi models themselves. So since it is possible to connect, you may say, well, why would I worry about that kind of stuff? It already connects. Well, what happens if you don't wanna pay 16 different internet bills? Well, let's say you have a laptop, a tablet, a mobile phone, and you need to get to your documents in your business area. You may decide to use a device like this, a Wi-Fi hotspot. It is a portable device, which I've been playing with for a week and it works great. It allows you access to everything that you normally have access to when you're in the office with your laptop or your notebook or your tablets. You can even connect the mobile phone over this. And the neat part about this is you can also have shared memory inside. So a backup module of data can be stored inside there just in case it doesn't get to the actual home office or your actual business, but you can have some documents stored on these. They have a limited power supply inside. Basically they can last 4.5 hours active or 150 hours in standby, but they do charge by USB, which means if you're using a laptop or a tablet, you can connect it to the USB port and it will not actually die on you because you'll have it charging off your laptop or tablet. Now for those wondering about charging, if you are in a vehicle, you can still use a DC to AC adapter, which sounds a little odd since we're gonna use an AC to DC adapter again to charge our laptops and tablets and cell phones and all that, but it is possible. If you were to charge the laptop or the tablet, which is charging your cell phone and this device simultaneously, then longevity of your device is a null point. You can basically charge all your devices, have access wirelessly, and get from client to client. 
And what is more important to business than the ability to interface with the clients in a way that promotes your business and allows you to actually grow by allowing your individual employees the ability of actually making the name of your business the one that actually goes up to the client face to face and still has human contact. Now this episode of TQA Weekly is brought to you by ProXPN. Now more than ever, your online freedom and privacy are under threat. Governments and ISPs want to control what you can or cannot see while keeping a detailed record of everything you do. Plus that free Wi-Fi at the coffee house or airport terminal is putting you at risk because your passwords and sensitive data can be intercepted more easily than you might think. ProXPN is a virtual private network that works with almost any internet connection. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel to which all your online data passes back and forth. Any online application can work with ProXPN, including your web browser, file, sharing, email, and instant messaging programs. ProXPN keeps everything you do online hidden from prying eyes, disguising your physical location, and giving you unfeathered access to any website or online service, no matter where you live or travel to. Offers online privacy with a complete 2048-bit encryption key and 512-bit encryption tunnel, works with OpenVPN or PPTP, protects yourself against your ISP's six strikes rule, internet filtering, blocked websites, geographical restrictions for internet content, and online video with worldwide servers in US, UK, Asia, and more. ProXPN's software for Windows and Mac offers advanced controls allowing you to select the programs or ports you want to anonymously route through ProXPN servers. They also work with iOS or Android devices, allowing you to use your data plan or public corporate Wi-Fi with complete and total privacy on the go. No app required, but you can get an app for the iOS or Android environments, and they have 24-7 customer support, so whenever you need help, you can just call them up, email them, contact them any way you want, and they will help you out and get this stuff working. And I've never had to do that. It is very easy to install, turn on, and use. Go to proxpn.com slash podcast for more information and to sign up. Now, TQA Weekly watchers and listeners also get a free 30-day risk-free trial. And if you don't like it and you actually cancel within the first seven days, they will give you a full refund. All you need to do is to... Visit ProXPN.com slash podcast and use the coupon code TQAWEE. ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for the entire year. We've got a special offer for you. Use the coupon code TQAWEE and receive 20% off the entire lifetime of your account. Thank you for watching, listening. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned next week for my next episode. Goodbye.